Hello, welcome to Eunice Tavern. Pull up a chair and listen to some nerds chat about the Final Fantasy TCG. I'm Derek P, also known as the Purple Man, and joining me today, he takes the man out of the Mormons, it's Michael McMillan! Hey! I heard a rumour he can't read, it's Andrew Campbell. Uh, I can't speak English either, so... Yeah. I actually stumbled when I was reading that out there, so maybe I can't read. Anyway, um, and with us today, we have the man with burning desires and creator of the Midgar blog. He plays Monofire, so you can bet he's grieving. It's James Greaves. Yo. Yeah, so there we are. <laughs> there we are, guys. There we are. Uh, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about Midgar blog, and we're going to be discussing Monofire, I believe. There's a couple more topics in there. Mm-hmm. Monofire is life, it's love, that's all we're going to talk about. That's oh. all we're getting. So, this is the Monofire cast. Um, joining me today is Emperor Zandi, um, Jekt, uh, Cloud and Phoenix, and there's no other cards, so it doesn't matter. Mm. Um, well, with that guy, you can only... Oh wait, that's a new card, I mean. No, there's Mont Blanc as well, that's a good card. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, is it the two-drop one? Oh no, the four-drop. No, four-drop, best fire card. Yeah. No, this, I, I really, I think the two drop one blocks. If we get a good FFTA two forward, that one block's going to be busted. Uh, the one that just like, choose one forward, deal 2k damage for each FFTA you control. That's oh, great. yeah. F FFTA two, sorry. I'm no, just yeah. I'm just staring at the, the Mont Blanc that's got the EX that gets a March 8. Oh, card. yeah, that one's really good as yeah, well. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I, I got I picked up in foil because I, I got a random pack of Opus 4. And I also have a Marchain foil from Opus 8. It's, I'm just staring at them both right now as if it, that's doing something. But um, yeah, I also started playing Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced. Weirdly. Anyway, this is really sidetracked. James! <laughs> James! Tell us about Midgar Blog. So yeah, I run uh, Midgar.blog. I have been running it for just over a year. I started it at the end of July 20. Uh, mainly because I wanted to stop boring my locals and wife to death about theory crafting and stuff. Huh. Uh, started off doing budget decks, which got quite a lot of traffic in, but it was hard to keep that going with a pool of about 700 cards at the time. Hmm. So it's now kind of gone into more nuanced stuff as I've got better, and like set reviews and stuff as well, so yeah. Very nice. Uh, yeah, we, we, we were big fans of your set reviews. We're quite... <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we we're, we often do them quite quickly, and then we'll read your ones afterwards. And we're just like, oh gosh, if only I'd said half of the things that really yeah, good I points. Yeah, I have comments about how quickly I put them out, but I'd rather get them right than just bash them out. Especially seeing as there's no shortage of people that get it out day one, so. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's fair enough. Very true. We quite like getting them out just so when, like, uh, the, the start of an opus, a new player um, is more likely to get into a game, and if they're able to see what cards uh, people are theorizing about and thinking a bit more, um, whether we're right or wrong is not really. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. You can always revisit an opinion. You know, that's yeah. the thing about doing written content. I think at least. Totally. Yeah. That's, this is this is what the podcast is all about. Looking back at stuff. So mm. yeah, you're a fellow content creator, and I think a couple of questions I would like to ask you is how have you enjoyed um, the the doing content for the Final Fantasy TCG in general? Uh, I've really enjoyed doing it in general. I mean, there have been some points where I've been kind of lost motivation to do. But I've got like quite a good amount of people that read it and send me support and comments, which keeps it going as well. Uh, there's a bit of a kind of empty niche for written content as well. Although you've got the guys over at RVA picking up like actual correspondence, and you've got Meta Potion doing articles as well. But from the UK, I don't think there's anybody else that does written content, as far as I'm aware. So... Um, there's Alex Hancock, who's a <laughs> who writes very opinionated posts, but other than no, that... they're good, they're good. But I mean, like, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> oh, that's an actual dedicated website as opposed oh, to like yeah. Facebook stuff, yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, definitely. Then you are you're you're definitely occupying a, a really solid niche there. And I mean, like I said, we we read your stuff and it's always fantastic. So if you haven't checked out any um, Midgar blog stuff, uh, the link will be in the description. Please give it a look. Um, I think your latest few articles have been, as you said, pretty nuanced, and that's been genuinely fantastic. I've, uh, like, I've, I've been really. It's just nice to look at something and go, "Oh, this has been put into words." I agree with this. Um, which is, I mean, I get some people good. telling me they don't agree with it. I can tell you that now. But, oh, we, and they're, we, we they're get... quite colourful in their language as well. But, mm, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, you know. I just, um, for for YouTube, we quite like getting dislikes and stuff because they actually do the exact same. <laughs> don't um, don't advise done. dislikes, Michael. Please, yeah, God. please don't dislike us. But yeah, dislikes <laughs> the exact same thing, 
um, as the like button does in YouTube algorithm. There is no uh, difference. Uh, that may be the case, but please like our content and not <laughs> yeah, dislike like it. it. Um, well, well, we're glad to hear you're enjoying it, at least, and you've definitely been a positive influence on the community. Mm -hmm. Would you uh, like to go into a bit of detail about yourself then and your sort of player profile? Oh. Have you played many games before this? Is this a first game or a, a 19th game? Um, uh, so, only card game I've played before this, except from like dabbling in the World of Warcraft card game, which was amazing. Nice. Um, was Yu Gi Oh!, which I actually met my wife through oh, um, <laughs> when I was 16. Is... So, that's pretty. Uh, we met again at YCS 2012 um, and obviously got married from there, so that was sweet. Wow. Uh, but Yu Gi Oh! is, of course, a terrible game for awful people. So when, <laughs> that, when Final Fantasy came out, we were like, cool. Yu-Gi-Oh's in the bin, let's go do this instead. And yeah, we've been playing ever since. Incredible. Are you the Incredible. Final Fantasy video game players before this then? Or? Oh yeah, hugely. Huge. Like FF7 is in my top five games, easy. And uh, Hazel's a massive FF9 fan. I mean, if you look at my status right now, I'm apparently playing FF14, so... <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, good game. Yeah, yeah, well, congratulations. Oh, that's really awesome to hear. Um, I mean, it's, it's not often we get to hear too many love stories through, through card games. We've obviously got Steve uh, and his uh, girlfriend met, they met through the card game as well. So yes, it's always she's lovely from to hear that sort of stuff. Isn't she? She's from uh, Manchester. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Lovely, lovely person. Um, she was up for uh, the Glasgow Regionals, which, you know, people listening, you should have attended. You could have, could have, should have, would have. But he mm. didn't. So, you know. No, but... James did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was good. It was awesome. Yeah, uh, you unfortunately missed the drinks we had afterwards. That was a uh... <laughs> yeah. My train was literally the last one going back to England, that, and I did not have a hotel book, so it was uh, do my first match of top eight. Steve destroyed me. Went to bread meets bread. <laughs> went home. Good day. Oh, well. <laughs> there you go. That's just what we do anyway in our locals. So. Mm. Um, well, hopefully, when Scotland actually gets a real event, we can go a proper, you know, actual. Because I didn't even get to see you, James. I was uh, working that day and meeting everyone afterwards. Are you in the Facebook group for organising a Northern Tournament, which we haven't done yet? Um, I am indeed, and I have been for a long time. <laughs> we should <laughs> probably start using that it. soon and get something sorted <laughs> yeah. for the North. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure I used it for that um, give give the North a uh, uh, thing petition. I don't know if that, if that petition's still floating around. No uh, sign it. I'll put that in the description as well if it's still floating I, around. I think it's up to 25 like, <laughs> signatures, and it's kind of like. Yeah, this is getting a bit silly now. Oh, yeah. Hashtag Winter Cup Glasgow 2019. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 25's more. You know, that's that's a lot. That's a Some great. That's that's a great number. I think that's the best number. I mean, that's like almost enough oh, to make a top four Swiss. That is more than most regionals get. Being fair, so yeah. Yeah, that's it. That, that's the magic number uh, last year that you get you two qualifications, wasn't that? If you have 25 people or more, it's just the best number. I'm just gonna keep saying that over and over again. Yeah, he's just turned 25, guys. I hope you haven't caught on. <laughs> All right, it's the last episode. It's my, have an it's my favourite number. Right, I, okay, anyway. So, speaking of people's favourite things, James, you like fire cards, right? Would you say I that, am partial to the occasional mm, red card. Would you say it's your favourite oh, element? Would you say it's your favourite element in the game? No. Oh, okay. What is? Yeah. Nidhogg. Nidhogg's your favourite oh, element, it's your just element. on its own, that's fair just enough. On its own. <laughs> wow, I mean, as, the talk's an there you go, and then, <laughs> as you can see, this is why we've brought James on, he's a true man of culture, bringing the famous Heg <laughs> into the conversation. If you're not or running not. a job first brood in your deck, are you really deck building? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good point, to be honest there. Uh, I Final mean, Fantasy is a game of 49 cards, decks, and Hig. <laughs> uh, for, for, for those that aren't uh, completely informed in YYT lore, uh, Hig is the Italian uh, word for Nidhogg. Well, <laughs> so... to be more precise, Hig is, is how it's it's like, uh, it's printed, H-E-G, but in Italy they actually just say Egg with no H. It's a, si <laughs> it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's a silent H. So it's like... Most romantic languages have silent H. Yeah, so. it's just bizarre that it's like... We, we called it Heg because it just sounds more Scottish, I guess, and we have to translate everything oh, into Scottish. Yeah, you get some Heg. But yeah, so there we are. That's a um, bit, of, bit of lore for you there. Andrew, Cam oh, Andrew yeah. Campbell opened a nice foily one in, in Milan and we decided... And then he decided to just crush people with it and... A deck that had the, that is one of the only cards in it that wasn't changed from the the, the deck he played in the side of it. Yeah, oh, started it, yeah. What a time! 
Come, come go to times. events, guys. This, this is just what this episode's been about. Very yeah. general chit chat. Go to events, they're fun. Events are correct. Great. But to real road this back on the topics we had planned. <gasps> oh, yeah, I was I was getting somewhere. And I, I was getting somewhere, and I feel like Ned Hog distracted me, but that's what it does, so it's okay. Ha 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 ha. So you have been quite successful running Mono Fire in regionals. You won one and you came top four in two. Uh, I think I'm up to top, uh, top cutting four or five now. There we go. Hmm. I knew it was more than two. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've been running at pretty much every event. That that one I won, I took it because I was just like, I don't really feel like playing. I'm going to take Mono Fire for a laugh and just soft comp. Because I was going with my wife and my friends anyway. And I ended up winning, so I was like, oh, hey, cool, maybe I'll put some hours into this deck. And it's done really well. Mm-hmm. That's so, awesome. Going into the future, I know Monofire is not quite a tier one deck. What do you think Monofire needs? I'm probably going to dive into this a lot as well, since I've been running it quite a lot, along with 50 forwards lightning. I've actually prepared a couple of cards. So in... In chapters nine, there was a three cost Tifa that I think Fire could really benefit from. It kind of sucks that it doesn't have any kind of ETB, but it's a three cost 6k, and the effect is opponent must block Tifa if able, so it's kind of like the Bagamnon that we've got now. Mm-hmm. Um, but when Tifa gets blocked on this card, she gains 2000 power to the end of the turn. You can pay one Fire CP to give her haste, or you can pay two Fire CP to make an opponent's forward active. What? And it kind of gives you combat-based spot removal. Whoa, and that's fire's already good at doing combat stuff, but this actually gives fire away to like Whoa. kill a stola, which is really cool. That's bizarre. Actually, that's the weirdest text I've I've heard in a while. Two fire CP and that thing is active, and then it will have to. That's what. Oh my goodness. That's I've, yeah. It's uh, I've, I've really wanted that card to turn up for. And there's another card that I really want to come across in chapters. Hopefully, it's in this article I've got open now. It isn't. Fa- um, so it is a two cost lion backup, and it doesn't do anything when you play it, but it's literally just put lion in the break zone, give a forward haste. Oh, that sounds incredible. Oh, like that it. sounds Which incredible. I really like because at the moment, uh, fire's got too much, too many decent backups, but once you're at five backups, you never want to see another backup. But having stuff like this, even though it's named, it kind of gives you the. If you need to just haste an HM and go for game, you can just do that. And I think fire mm. needs to be able to do that because it's obviously cack. Yeah. Archangel Hardmore. Yeah. yeah. It's called that for a reason. Yeah. Totally agree with that. That's a really cool card. Bizarrely, me and, and Steve Dolman actually just randomly were talking about cards, like theorizing a couple of things for lightning or fire, bizarrely, because um we're talking about how electric jellyfish, if the if the text on it was swapped around, it would be a million times better. Because coming in and giving a foretaste and then breaking to dull something is not as powerful as coming in and and dulling something and then breaking to give something haste whenever you want. Mm. It's it just, and I think on a backup, it would be great if a backup just came in, it was just a two cost vanilla, except you could sack it, like you just said, like the chapters card does, and give something haste. And either of those elements, I mean, I'd prefer lightning because I'm a big lightning fan, but I think fire could do with a card like that. Absolutely agree. Yeah, well, so cool. yeah, I, that sounds pretty good because currently the. Um, like the uh, f- uh, combo fire decks, like fire ice and fire water. Um, my God, I know it's a bit of just kind of fit there. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, like fire ice and fire water. Um, they basically just need to get lucky if they're draws and they'll run three sage and then three zidane, uh, or three lock and three ha- uh, sage if they want to go aggro like that. Mm-hmm. But having a backup that can time that instead, uh, not just mono fire here, but um, combo fire cards would always be always benefit from that as well so I, I think that would be a much cooler version of sage yes i think having the ability to pop it when you like yeah and it better it'd been better than just early game it'd been like you know you run three sage just because you want to see it early game because it's dead for the rest of it well it's also in fire there's a big problem in mono fire at the moment is you most of the time you first back up is a really sad back like a red <laughs> yeah. mage with no target or you know something like that like Vivi or good. Black Vaults or something oh, like Never that. Vivi turn one, worst feel. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Sometimes you have to. It's like me only turn one in wind. The thing is, wind yeah. only has that. That's the only one. It's the only bad one. Everything else is good. I had a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, I, God. Lebrou is the only turn one fire backup you ever want to play discuss. Uh, Mont Blanc, third for a Marshy. Yeah, oh, Mont you're Blanc, right. Selfie a cool turn one. Or Gassetsu if you're running the old build I was running. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. Damn. Or Dominion Legionary, I suppose, if you're running like 13 backups. Damn. Oh, yeah, that's one thing we've discussed on the um, on the Final Fantasy TCG Discord for the Reddit, is one thing that Fire could hugely benefit from is just like a two-cost Dominion League. Because then if you can just search off that fourth one, it's actually pretty good. Oh, that'd be so good. <laughs> oh, God, it gives you sorry, Nosh Talon, yeah. basically, but red. Which yeah. is cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is not too bad, yeah. I mean, the fire cards, I know, so you don't mind discarding them. <laughs> God, sorry, that was, that was a bit nasty. Um, I mean, well, Cloud is an absolutely fantastic card. And I actually hated on it when I first came out. Because, it. I mean, I still th I think it should deal 1,000 more. But it's proven itself to, uh, time and time again to be an instant like, 3 of in most fire decks. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, so, so powerful. I mean, me and uh, Derek had, had, had a couple <laughs> of, like, 10 games or something. Yeah. And every time I could flicker Cloud, yeah. I would flicker it. Oh, no, I, like, I, I lost a lot of those games. He was playing mm. better decks. Um, just to, yeah. But, like, the, the flickering of the Cloud held me in for a, a couple turns before he held me out. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. Was, it's like I've got Rico on the board, and I just see 10 cards disappear from his deck, and I'm like, eh, <laughs> excellent, yes. I, I mean, um... oh, yeah, but you don't get put to six damage, and you're like, well, oh, oh, no. You know, yeah, that's, true. that's true. You, you, You're still, like, a Death Star's fully operational, so I mean, you're six damage. <laughs> My hasty forwards it because you, you're playing wind and you have something up your sleeve, clearly. Of course, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Play wind. Wind always has something. Wind always, I know. And it's getting more in a set, so, you know. Ding. Yeah. Mm. I would quite like fire to get some sort of. We'll still keep it in quite the fiery force of just being able to burn, deal damage at any point, no matter if it's active, dull, damaged, non damaged. But yeah, just like it to ignore opponents' abilities. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just not that too far. Like, no. I'm not like glad you spent eighty pounds on that each store. I don't care about it. <laughs> if you look at Melty Gemini, um, Water's got something that Fire could use, like a similar effect. If you just have yeah. like a monster out that says damage dealt by fire cards can't be prevented. That'd be nice. But it doesn't do anything else, so it, it can't generate CP if it's a monster, so it's literally like a it sits here doing nothing but just having an answer to stuff like Minwu and Aerith would be nice. In the mm -hmm. second um, lost episode of the YTT um, Robert uh, Phillips actually said he would, uh, we, we asked him the question uh, what card would you um, errata to be in a different element or to have a different text or whatever and he said Cagnazzo, he thinks there should be a fire Nazo. And yeah, he got he very heated. Fire Nazo, yeah. <laughs> he got very angry. Like this was the like, we had to dial down the podcast volume yeah. <laughs> um, God, yeah. for Fire Nazo. Um and actually I totally agree. Um I think I, I don't know. A, a fire Cagnazzo would be a decent Phoenix target as well, and we don't have many of those in fire. Mm. We have three drop VV. Well if you compare the next closest card to Cagnazzo in fire it's Firion. and if you look at the impact playing a Firion versus playing a kanyatso has on the game yeah. it's pretty different true. yeah very true the two drop Firion is quite good is that the two yeah. drop we're talking about the two drop yeah, the, two the drop ex the only good i really yeah. like, i mean ex is good that's nice yeah, as well it's, handy. It's, it's not irrelevant but for one more you could have kanyatso is what i'm trying to say oh yeah yeah oh yeah absolutely <laughs> um or you could have ishtola or yeah. Edith. it's bigger things that have bigger impacts on boards um, no, I, I totally get that. Um, it's, I think fire has been designed to have lots of one for one removal, but then, uh, because it can it can target um everything with damage, unlike ice and lightning, which are like dull and everything, um, and wind can only do small bits of damage. The re uh, the fact that it's doing one for one, they've made it more expensive to cover up from that. Yeah, uh, like one cost every every fire card seems one cost more than it should be. Well, you just hold Duncan next to Sid Rain. And you have what's wrong with fire. Yeah. God, yeah, that's so painful to hear. <laughs> um, and all the fire specials have the dull symbol because, to whatever reason, so is believed that that's a good symbol. The dull symbol, uh, as in like any ability, cost to dull um, on forwards. I think is actually one of the most condemning things you can give to a forward. Yeah. Um, the Duncan special, for example. I mean, I know it can be quote unquote broken. Um, but see if you just wrote the line of text, you can only use this once a turn. Suddenly, Duncan's much better because it's possibly killing two forwards in a turn. Yeah, imagine if it was just S, it'd be nuts. It'd actually be like, this is a good fire, like, especially seeing as you can just start throwing Sabins for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Instead, it's exactly the same as Lisa's special. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah. Oh, but you, if if you give it breathe with cyan, it says my good. <laughs> yeah, but that means you're running cyan, so yeah, yeah it means you're running a forty-seven problems. card deck yeah. with the three cyans. I mean, Joe's fine. If they did have breathe, it would be fine because then you'd have this really interesting mechanic where you could dull it. Yeah, you sacrifice could you play your to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could either use it like attack during your turn, block, but also do the special to hit something else at the same time, or. Yeah. They are playing lightning, which fire strangely is such a good matchup against. Um, I think it's um, it's EXs. EXs are quite good against aggro. Uh, I've really found this from what fire, which is I mean, usually we're running like nineteen, but they're not just like, oh, I've thrown in this in there because I think this five drop Mustadio will be good. It's often because um, the the DXs are doing something relevant and they're always quite good. So like hitting a cloud on EX that's stopping the next ball from attacking. Giving you, you know, it's giving you three more turns because you're dying because you, you draw into removal and all that. It's a weird thing, but EXs are actually really good against uh, removal. And fire has some of the best. Um, yeah, it has and some you're really playing good... them anyway as well, which is really nice. Yeah, it's like you, you have fire has some good EX, uh, one for uh, one for one removal is expensive, but see when you're not paying for it, suddenly it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Black Waltz two, for example, I think that is. That that can be very very good. Um, it's not always, but it's always doing something. And I think that I've been running as a three of them, a Final Fantasy Nine Water Fire deck for obvious reasons. Hmm. And hitting that an EX is always a fun thing to do. Hmm. Also got Marsh as well, who is just a stupid, stupid, stupid EX burst because it lets you just oh, God, craft yeah. your next turn. Yep. You're like, um, you take clouds. a damage. I'm going to pick up this answer to your board and let's go. Yeah. Cloud, for example, as well. I'm running Zach in any fire deck just. Because EX either get to fire CP or get something that's gonna that is now actually stronger because I've uh, taken a damage from my break zone. It's just super powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's cool. I mean, if you want to go back to the the Kenyatso and fire um, comparison, there was a overpowered version in fire. Oh, um, the primal, 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 primal with it close. Bahamut was actually dark. Oh I mean. yeah, so it was. So pri yeah, the primals. This this was. We should, we should give that context. Were released um, in one of the last sets um, of uh, chapters, and that's why they were always so broken because they just sort of threw they, they threw mud at the wall and saw what stuck. Um, however, if you want to learn more about the general primals and stuff, actually, um, James is just lovely put in the chat here. Um, the you can actually find this in Edgar blog as well. We'll link that in, in the description along with this. But the fire one, Ifrit, as we mentioned earlier on, had effects that got stacked on more and more depending on how many backups you had. So all for your opponent controls. If they control four backups of fire, he deals an additional four thousand. If you control six or more fire backups, he deals an additional 4,000, so you're doing 4, 8, or 12,000. I mean, it does get absolutely stonewalled by Aerith or Minwu. Or no, it's, it's, it'll be all at once, like most uh, stacking uh, damage effects, wouldn't it? No, it is classed as separate. It's, oh, yeah, I think it's, it's three autos. Oh, that's... Yeah, <laughs> God. Like, Classic see... fire. It's, it's, I mean, a wind card countering a fire card. <gasps> well, I mean, to be fair, it means when you've got Ishtola out, Ishtola can only, if you, um, Ishtola can't stop the board wipe if you've got, um, like, enough fire backups to deal with 12,000, because you can only choose one of the abilities. So that's one benefit. I mean, obviously this is, um, in a, like, a, a pre-Ishtola game in general, but um, if this was to be printed now, that's some a benefit to fire that uh, Aerith might counter it, but each love wouldn't if you're uh, reaching max capacity. Mm -hmm. So yes. So yes. Is there any a, any other fire cards we think that Kadiyama must print to give us give us all the power? Salamander, six cost fire summon. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, actually, some a nice. I don't run many. Really run many summons but having like a summon i feel like i really want to run in fire would be nice because phoenix is good but i don't run it um i it's, run it's... bahamut just because i have to because veritas exists and then belias is there just so people don't go why aren't you running any summons 
Um, um, like an actually good summon would feel really good. Well, do you not? Oh, yeah, Phoenix is probably better in non-fire deck. Absolutely. And I think that's actually probably the best Veritas tech in Earth Wind and all that because they're not even a tech, just a good counter to it. Because mm-hmm. Veritas been ran a lot, so as uh, we've said earlier in the podcast, or I've said in videos in general, that oh, you should just ignore it. But when people are playing three Veritas, you kind of can't. Um, mm-hmm. And I think Phoenix is a good counterplay to it because you just Phoenix back as a Dan. And you want Sedan dead, so you don't mind to put it in a break zone when Veritas dies. Yeah. So you kill the Veritas, get Phoenix looking, uh, get Sedan looking in her hand, and then uh, get to play another Sedan later on. But yeah. fi- that's not a f- Zidane's not a fire card, so sorry. Why is it a fire card, Kagiyam? Yeah. Fire is a name. Oh, jeez. That's what we need. Oh, oh God. Yep. It needs yeah. more Zidane's, not like. No, that's not true. Do not go <laughs> that. <laughs> just errata phoenix to be in light or dark and there we are whoa no Game whoa no, 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 no. <laughs> oh no i mean i i play mono fire quite differently i'm running 10 summons um three of the said bahamut you're talking about i run one of the the recent four cost bahamut i am running kitchen and still being able to cast 11k rfg from deck Makes some people who play an early rash, an an early ash, really salty, um, because that will ki- kill the wacker boosted ones, two phoenix, two Brunhilde, two Belias. You've kind of got a wide coverage, but I'm liking Belias and less and less these days. I won't lie. Um, I I used to run it like in every single fire day. I used to be like a diehard ice fire player. Um. And I still will dabble in it, but I think, I don't know, the fact that Bly is very rarely ever actually kills anything, unless your opponent, I mean, unless your opponent, it's very rare that you block and you have something and your opponent doesn't have something, like a Diabolos or a Kukulain or something. So even when you do get a draw and it's really good value, I've just been unable to kill things a lot of the time. Um, But uh, the 4-drop Phoenix, if you have relevant fire, forwards are relevant especially relevant forwards outside of fire that you like you would like to play from break zone even though i think the forward phoenix isn't fantastic value it's just it, it's still really, it's really good because i mean making ferry and deal 8k the, the one drop vv is the obvious thing so four drop phoenix is uh, a fire uh, summon i think is strong i don't know if i'd run it in mono fire but there's a possibility you've got some you've got ferry in you can maybe run a one of warrior of light the two drop starter one like a rando tifa i don't think it really works in mono but i can definitely see its merit in like fire ice or fire water that's fair i think if you have something to combo off of it um there's not really many i mean the new um ifrit the the mobius style one and um, that may be able to do something with it that's a lot of cp though i think seven cp gain a forward wipe their board if you're lucky maybe i don't know um, if the, I don't know if, if Fire had some like decent way, if, if Fire had a Porom or an Ishtola to counter stuff or um, to counter Ishtola or counter Aerith and all that, um, I think it might be slightly better. Or if it had a hal- if Fire had Halcon Halcon Arsus, Arsus, yeah, yeah, that'd be spawn. Why does why is the new Kukulain in water? Water doesn't need it. Water doesn't want it. <laughs> it's already got Halicarnassus. Give it to Fire. Fire got, Fire got exactly the Belias they already have. Thanks, yeah, Obama. Yeah. Yeah, come on, come on. I mean, you made a great game, but fire, poor, poor guys. I mean, I suppose every game has to have a worst element. Um, yeah. And and lightning, mono lightning is very powerful, but every other lightning deck is sort of approaching um, worst splash element lately. Uh, fire is a really good splash element because of EXs and generically powerful cards, which is <laughs> unbelievable to say. <laughs> like... Uh, three drop cloud and uh, phoenix is a is probably one of the best splash cards in any deck because you uh it combos so well with other elements um but as a mono deck it's as i think i could easily say it's one of it's probably the weakest mono decks right now that's why we're having this discussion mm-hmm. yeah just give more genetic just if, every time you make a fire forward just give it haste that's all we need to do it's more brave yeah, that's good. I mean, Brave, Brave is the weakest of them. A first strike. Give them all first strike. That'd be good. <laughs> give us a backup that gives all fire forwards first strike. What Permanent could the problem make. be? Mm-hmm. Don't, don't make do it. That. Make, make it. Make it seven drop because that's how much it costs in that is the game players. <laughs> and you take one damage that you can't activate EX off of. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, fire things. 
you also like RSG the top 40 cards of your deck. <laughs> <laughs> Something I thought I, I would really, really, really like is if Fire had a really cheap way of dealing itself damage that's not for Sawyer. You want to run, like, like just just doesn't require dollying or say it's like put a backup in a break zone, deal yourself one damage and do X next a thing, like deal something damage or break a forward or something. Just because I like the idea of um, being able to actively make Ject, Cloud, and least more powerful. Um, leave the most powerful fire cards i think we uh, uh, could argue and maybe some people would agree um just because it's i mean being able to quickly do yourself damage is some oh because it's the fire is not really a defensive deck and playing it as such is maybe not the best thing to do so having something to actively do it does not call for soya because soya is not killing anything nowadays um I don't know. I, I think that's something I'd like to see in Fire, uh, but I don't know how it'd be implemented. Someone smarter than me and more experienced than me can um, design one for me. But one cost goblin. Yeah. Take a point of damage. Draw two. Oh, take a point of damage. Choose one forward. Give it haste. Hmm, maybe a bit too weak. I think draw two is something that would probably give to water. Just thematically. Yeah. I mean, Fire have had a wee bit of draw here and there. But usually it's haste, first strike, then draw. Like, Belias, Belias, Goblin, the Goblin. <laughs> just, just do what Magic does and say discard first and then draw. Ooh. That's what they always do. So, like, discard two, draw three or something nonsense like that. Or, you know, discard one, draw three. <laughs> well, well, they have Moogle and Poo Poo, and I don't think they'll do another. Yeah, I, I don't know why I'm saying draw three, as if that's something that's going to happen. I don't, I don't know. Um, Larsa and Hilda do it, but they cost six. So yeah, but you're taking a point of damage. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. You could do <laughs> right something like Hilda, where it's like a six cost backup, and you can draw up to three cards, but you take a point of damage for every one you draw. <gasps> oh my god, yes, do that. that would be risk reward. Do that. There you go. Yeah, so, activate you there. all the X's, please. Let me hit three marsh. Just... <laughs> come, come yeah, on. it doesn't have the right. the claws. Suddenly, That's good. Or it's like, see if you're able to do it during your opponent's turn. Like, see if it's a summon that dealt you a point of damage, and yeah. don't tell me Neil Bahamut. For what? Well, I don't <laughs> care. It does. <laughs> don't tell me that. Um, or like an ability on a backup that um, said PX and I don't know what, whatever. Like so, something like Hilda there. Um, and so, suddenly, like I've got a board of nine Ks and eleven Ks because Melissa's there. Or suddenly, the cloud I played uh, is going to be dealing more damage or whatever. I don't know. I think yeah, I do. I like that idea. Deal yourself X amount of damage for each card you draw. Because mm-hmm. that's that's a good way of siphoning to get into backups early. It's a good way of making sure your least and clouds are actually going to kill stuff. I'm just imagining the sort of silly turn one games where you just go like play it and you just keep drawing and playing forwards. I mean, the mm-hmm. problem is though, you'd see it splashed into like Earth Wind, and then somebody just tamer in a Cecil and just blow somebody up up. Just yeah. like, well, great. I, feel I mean, point of damage for every fire card you draw, or something like that. Yeah, that would be a good text yeah. to have on it because they, you start seeing Noctis just go crazy and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way too good with Noctis, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, the thing is, if there's any card that's good that's not in light or dark, I mean, well, it's not in light, it's not in dark, no, in light. Sorry, um, it will see play in Earth Wind because Earth Wind is so easy to splash into Tri Tower. And that actually leads us in, into the the, um, the next topic, so in quotation marks, because this has just been a very nice general chat, um, is about tricolor decks in general. Um, so I, I, we've, we've got a couple of arguments in our, um There's something about the the new Moogle that's coming out that... Uh, God, sorry, someone's just saying most in chat. <laughs> <laughs> God. Um, the, we've got the... The new uh, Ice Wind Moogle that can tap for it's an ice card and tap for wind and stuff. And we just want to talk about tricolor decks and possibly even quad color decks in the future. And if it's possible to run a good one that's not it's a Final Fantasy XI. I think you missed the, the card that really is kind of. There's a few cards that are really putting this idea that we could be seeing it more often. You have the Chaos Mobius, the six cost and 9k category Mobius forward who gains different effects for what elements you've paid it with. Fire, he deals 5k to board. If you've paid it with lightning, you 
select a monster. No, they select a monster and they Your sack it. Your opponent selects a monster and sacks it, that's right. And ice, they discard a card, so... Mm -hmm. Just and fire ice, breaking a monster doesn't matter. Yeah, not really. Not okay. um, I don't know if I would... I wouldn't run a, a, a tertiary just to break monsters, I think. But you, you've mentioned in the past that um, there's likely going to be a... Um, a light variant of this, which will be um, water, wind, and lightning. Was it water, wind, and earth? Water, wind, and earth. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, they are already three element Ugh. combinations we've seen in play together. Um, I, I've got a quite infamous water, wind, earth deck um, that was lots of good fun, like two opuses ago, and two uh, Shendav did exceptionally well in a like a, a sort of friendly tournament. It wasn't a competitive one, but he did. He came second place with water, wind, earth. That's already an element combination we've seen him play, but I don't know if we'd see it with light, maybe, because you don't have Camp Chaos. Yeah, why not? I mean, James has been running water with what in there? Wind Earth without the Camp Chaos engine. Oh, for monsters. Huh? I'm sure, yeah. I, well, I, yeah, or was it monsters or was it just water wind earth in general? It's, it's, it's only wind earth, but it's involving a famous first brood, which is always very... <laughs> <laughs> My other favourite card. Harry's Vogger. It's Harry. We just call it Harry. Oh, well. <laughs> I've seen people call it Henry. That's another one that seems to go around. <laughs> I, just, I just go... <laughs> and then people understand what I'm talking about. Well, okay. Yeah. People um, must understand demonic. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I, I spoke. Uh, most Scottish schools teach demon um, mm. or Gaelic, um, and yeah. as, a, as an elective, they're, they're interchangeable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could just be speaking one and realise, oh, I'm another one. But everyone understands. Oh, I summoned Lord Satan. Whoops. <laughs> oh God, it's not again. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that's fair. You've been running your House of Vargar deck, um, and I know the uh, Jamie Faulkner. Also ran uh, Earth, Wind, and Milan, and he went five three with it, so it's not too actually too bad at all. Or was it four five two? I can't remember what it was. Well, four three, something like that. However many rounds it was, Milan, um, he did well with it, and um, without any light or dark cards in general, and just uh, ran backup hate, which was actually yeah. really powerful against fifteen backup decks, mm -hmm. which there's loads of going around now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's fair. I think the the meta has actually weirdly evolved into lots of 15 backup decks, and tricolor decks naturally need to run more the more backups than usual because they need they like literally need a good opening or they can't function because most cards in their hand act like light or dark cards. Um, if if they've drawn mediocre to poorly, um, which is like most decks can usually get away with a mediocre opening draw, but tricolor usually can't. Um, so it, it sort of leads into. Um, and the brother's slowly becoming more viable because of Final Fantasy XI engine. Do we think there's an engine that can rival that in power um, scale that uh, that may come out this set or we've seen cards already? FFCC will only continue to get better at Colorfix. If you open a Norse Dallin turn one, you can safely say you can play Windex uh, for the rest of the game, and then you just draw into another backup and you got them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. I've actually been. I've actually got a water wind fire list. Um, I might actually link it. I spent a good while on it. And it was good fun. Um, that had Norshalan and Meath, and oh, it, yeah. has, it has designs to always get you. Like you hit Norshalan, and you will get fire and water because you just you've loads of three drop forwards. I used to discard them off Meath to get the searcher pain that gets you Yuna, and suddenly you're set up. And you can go uh, Norshalan Shalotta, and you just golden. As yeah, that that too. That too. If you already got Meath or you already got a fire yeah. backup or um, you know or whatever, then yeah, that too. Um, Charlotte is a really, I think, underrated card. I, I overrated it and underrated it, and now I think it's a good card again. Wow, <laughs> wow! You back round on it again, Michael. I see. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's, I don't think it's as busted. I don't think it's the Phoenix Arata I've always been asking for, but it's still good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just there's just certain things that it lets you do that are not obvious or as, as explored because we've had this limitation on the fact that you can only have up to five backups in play. Yeah. Well, pay for Fina without, uh, without that's starting card from hand. That's a pretty big one. Really powerful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's the biggest one in wind. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've like, got... Really, really powerful. Yeah, I don't know. I've got people... Out, I've cast some, like, three-cost summons with no backups active by just pitching and breaking from 
from the Charlotte. You can cast Diabolos completely tapped and only discard two cards in yeah, hand to discuss. Like, yeah, just things like that just catch people out and, and they're not expected because it's not seen as, as much play as, as some people would think or maybe not as other people would think. Yeah, fair enough. Or just milling, just doing that one extra mill. Oh, that one sneaky for, extra mill. Discarding a card from hand or whatever. Oh. Yeah, sure, a lot is good. Um, I don't know if it's, it's enough just to find a whole tricolor deck on. Mm. Needs um, the right I type of deck. The the importance of uh, the Star Sibyl engine is there's more than three ways in your deck to search for the chaos, and the deck can survive without it. So it's like. Do, is there ever going to be like true three color or there's, there's going to be six nor Stalins essentially that are always going to guarantee you can try color it out and color fix and all that or is it always going to be two colors that are consistent together splash an extra element we got so loads of people have kind of postulated that the new class 9 Moogle might be part of a cycle mm-hmm. that starts linking together elements if that's a thing you might see more kind of multicolor decks come out that aren't just earth wind and then 10 random card sounds, it's, yeah. we, we haven't seen any spoiled and we've got like 72 cards spoiled now hmm. so yeah. there's not much room left to spoil them if they want to do a full cycle of dual color backups that's fair or do you think they'll introduce a couple um, one or two or three uh, every yeah. the set? because they do that sometimes I hope they give us at least five <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um, it would be good to have more of those or they have Sarah to search that, and then Mog thirteen to search into. Oh that. wait, yeah, sorry. I'm in this game. I meant, I meant six. I meant six. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I forgot um, how many elements there was again. <laughs> fire doesn't count. Don't game is. Oh right, yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, fire, fire. Get one well then, at least, well then, at least five. We'll go back to my original statement then. At least five. <laughs> oh my god, the, the fire backup that can deal you a point of damage is just that. It's the same as everything else. It's like two, uh, two, two oh. fire backup can tap for RCP, but it deals you a point of damage as it enters. <laughs> Or, 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 if you use it to pay for RCP, you take a damage. Oh, every time. You get Cecil, boom. Oh my god, you can Noctis. You can pay for Noctis <laughs> of that. Like, that's really good. That's, <laughs> yeah, I might get on that. Yes. <laughs> well, right, well, well, if, if you're looking for, like, new card game designers, we're here. Yeah, we've been here. We're not, we're not free, but... I mean, I don't mind at this point if it gets, if it gets me a chance. I'll give it a go. I think that's a good yeah. idea, though. I like that. Like, just you know, if you pay a diff- if you pay the other other element, take a damage. That's fun. Just do anything, deal yourself with damage. That's yeah. all I want to do. Just, yeah. just if you breathe a certain way, deal yourself. With <laughs> yeah. Because if you have a card down that says "Do anything, take a point of damage." You will die in the next seven actions. Ding. I mean, that's an all or nothing card. I mean, well, the thing is, damage is a really good resource because it doesn't cost you anything, and it's better than. Um, cards and deck as a resource because you don't, I mean, cards and deck as a resource in this game is much more detrimental, I'd argue because um, like how fast games go so the 5 drop cloud, you can only ever do that once in very specific games pretty much, yeah um, and if you do it loads like me, well, you lose mill absolutely <laughs> every time so, so just, just just trigger it, just any time you can trigger cloud, trigger it, that's what you should do um, Michael's the but, pro like, tip imagine of milling out doing a point of damage Play cloud back onto the field free. Oh my god! That'd be uh, that cloud. Oh, errata, yeah. errata right now is too good. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I said. A cloud should have said when we first got spoiled. Everyone yeah. shouted at me, of course. But um, it does seem there's like it's it was... busted. Yeah, that's busted. Yeah, yeah. Well, we need that, don't we? <laughs> and fire, yeah, it would make sense right now for that deck, or just any yeah. any uh, yeah, that element. It would make sense. Yeah, You'd... that's what I mean. Like, like damage as a resource is better. Like, see if it said that 1k less and it said that, I think it'd be like slightly less busted. But you know, um, like, damage resource is a resource is a better resource to spend than milling yourself. And I think fire could use more of that because it has lots of things that benefit from um, having, uh, like, even if it had something as consistent as Cecil, Cecil can deal you a point of damage the turn it enters, but it also does something else the turn it enters, so it's always going to be consistent and good. Um, and can deal yourself damage. So Earth has that. Um, most of water has Fasoya. No other deck, no other uh, element has uh, Fasoya. Don't don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> like people were telling me about their fire their Fasoya lists, and I'm like, oh, that's great. And then and then I'm like, oh, how many metal are you running? You're like, oh wait, <laughs> I can't discard it. 
Ah, uh, yeah. No. R- r- running Telica. Oof. To discard to the Fasoya. But they I, kill it before you I think no- it. Makes me yeah. Ill. I just think nobody's yeah. ever... You know what? It's funny because I've thought to myself, like, nobody's ever tried it because it just does seem like such a waste of a, a space to put that card in. But yeah. who's really going to kill that unless it's incidentally? I don't think um, it'll I mean, ever die. It'll just come into play. I'm, I'm, your I'm, opponent I'm, will be... Play your opponent I'm will be... Yeah, die. exactly. That's fine. But, like, you just... You, you should play it. Your opponent will just be so confused that it's it's they've actually seen that card get played that they'll decide to just they'll just lose their mind i think i think if that's anyone is greatest strength obviously. yeah they see the red cards well, come down fair, what actually. on earth are you doing and yeah then you win this- so yeah. maybe maybe telica is actually a super secret good oh, card God. and nobody's You're just right. nobody's literally nobody's tried it so nobody knows we'll, we'll, we'll psychological we'll warfare on a podcast it. as yeah. soon as someone picks up your card and reads that you've won the game there you 100%. go, there you go. yeah like like, that's why you're on a marrow in every uh, F1 deck. <laughs> that's that, why you're on that... Tracefogger. People go, what on earth is that? Yeah, I, I can't tell you what all the things do on that card, but I've heard them more recently thanks to yourself and whatnot, but... Um, I, I haven't shut up on that. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I can tell you, it doesn't kill your opponent's forwards. So... Man, man, I'll tell you... If your opponent's okay. break zone, okay. it ends the game if they're playing more... So... I was about to say, so here's a bizarre thing, right? I just want to throw this in because I've, it's leading on to random stuff that I was I wanted to say. Actually, I didn't, but now I'm going to say it. So, if you could, ch- if you change one of the abilities on it, you know how the ability that says remove the opponent's breaks from the game? What if, instead of that, it said you could shuffle an, a, a, a break zone into their deck? Like, shuffle a player's break zone into their deck. What if it said that? Instead, I would do it myself. Exactly. It and then you said we Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, be so I've been, I've been like wanting more and more a card that lets you shuffle your own break zone back into your deck, because it just sounds like the next level of playing Riku this game. Huh? It makes Riku too strong then, because you've got your opponent. Well, on the clock and it makes Riku too strong, strong unless they're also playing it, and then it makes Riku useless unless you happen yeah. to mill that specific card that you know that does that out of their deck and it doesn't have an EX or whatever if they hit it in damage or blah 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 I think they should just make a card that does that give it an EX to it just make it that little bit extra nuts and see how it goes <laughs> spicy. how about if both you and your opponent have over 20 cards in your break zone yeah okay you can you and your opponent replace your deck zone with your break zone Whoa. that is a huge card is I don't think I didn't catch oh I see I had I had no idea because it sounded so Terribly designed. I don't know how to put. I don't know what else to uh, say there. Change of the spirit, and it was instantly banned. Oh really? Okay. Well, yeah. there you go. The only nah, Yu-Gi-Oh but... I quote is the best Yu-Gi-Oh, which is original Yu-Gi-Oh. Because you go, what you do with it is you go turn one, mill yourself till you've got nothing left in your break zone. Mm-hmm. Switch both players' decks and graveyards. Past turn, opponent can't draw you vaguely. Oh seriously? That's how it See, works. That's why I did add the caveat of. Yeah, it's funny. Both you and your opponent. If both, if both, I get you. Yeah, that's that's cool. I think that's a good idea. Like maybe maybe the card I said is a bit too good. Obviously, I want it to be as as powerful as it can be. Like in order for it to do its ability as much as it can, like shuffling in. But um, maybe there could be a clause on this hypothetical card that's like, if you have X amount, then do it, and it's not just whenever. That would be more realistic, I guess. It's still yeah, or even if you it does it a certain amount of damage, you know. Oh, I don't know if you're on yeah, a certain amount of damage, you can do it. That's yeah, anything, anything like that makes it sound like more of a sorry, talking to me. Real card, but yeah, that's just something I've wanted. So there you go. <laughs> and I think now that we've brought up that dreaded game that thankfully brought together our lovely guest and his partner together, I think we shall call it a night. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you for joining us for this. Uh, <laughs> but th- th- that's weirdly off topic, but on topic um, yep, podcast. Totally. Just... Um, I'd like to really, really thank James for joining us. He's our third guest and he's been a, a fantastic one. He actually brought notes and amazing. stuff as well. This is new. So amazing. Well, I didn't know what he was doing when he came on. Yeah. He's definitely yeah. been the best guest named James. Oh! <laughs> Parade and James is just sitting there, just all sad now. I mean, he's not listening to this, who are we kidding? <laughs> I thought the joke was he was a co-host as well. Yeah, yeah, oh. yes. 
Oh, he was a guest. <laughs> oh wow, now he's really gonna be ups- now he's really gonna be upset if he hears this. Jeez, he's never listened to one of these in his life. So James, if you're listening, to this, not even the one that he was on. PM me. Just, just yes. I mean, I don't listen to these. I don't because I don't like hearing my voice. I think it's so awful. Oh, I don't like my voice either. But you know, we've already said I this always, a million times. I always re-listen to stuff to make sure I've not said anything terribly incriminating. <laughs> just, oh man, I hope nobody goes, "Hey, on this, you said this," and it's like, "Oh boy." I hope you know for pre-recording, I I pressed the record button, so everything you said there is gonna get held against you in the what? Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> God, mm. the amount of crimes against the Geneva Convention this man committed is mm. just <laughs> playing my file was just a start, really. <laughs> yeah, that's that, it. That was the warning signs. Yes, he wants to watch God. the world burn, just like <laughs> when he plays Fire Decks. God, I, I, I hope you know, guys. Um, just just a little recording stuff we have, and um, we may release some of it. Comment down below if that's something you're interested in. As we actually do a bit of pre-recording and most majority of the time is spent working out the sort of comedic intros we have for each other and some mm. of them are so bad and so harsh or nasty that we can't do them so yeah that's very true we, we, we actually could incriminate ourselves with that that's all i'm saying to that we'll, we'll, we'll end now yes let's end it now so thank you so much <laughs> for listening everyone who did please check out our good friend james greaves blog the midgar blog we'll put that link in the description and check out the YYT as well, obviously. Like us, subscribe us for awesome updates and content like this and other videos like our gameplay videos. And yeah, thank you, Michael. Goodbye. Thank you, Andrew. Goodbye. Thank you very much, James. Thanks. It's me. been a pleasure. And I'm Derek P. Saying, see you next time. Bye, I'm not guys. Derek P. <laughs> I want to Derek P. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>